The other thing that's sad is, you know, this uh, high-rise fire oh, in the Bronx. Yeah. And you know what? You know what? I've, oh, man. You know, every time there's a huge fire and there's lots, you know, and lots of fatalities, mm -hmm. at least in New York City, mm -hmm. it's always immigrants. Mm. Always immigrants. I did see the, the victims. They were always immigrants. Immigrants. Yeah. yeah. So hundreds of mourners filled the Bronx Mosque Sunday to bid farewell to those who died exactly one week ago in the deadliest fire in New York City in three decades. Mm. 17, 17 people died in, died in the fire, which authorities said was sparked by a faulty space heater on the third floor. This was up in the Bronx. Uh, Sunday's mass funeral at the Islamic Cultural Center capped a week of prayers and mourning within a closed-knit community hailing from West Africa, <clears throat> most with connections to the small country of Gambia. Mm. I almost, saw a lot of them were Muslims. Yeah, yeah, and almost everybody who passed was from West Africa. Yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the magnitude of the tragedy, funeral organizers insisted on a public funeral to bring attention to the plight of immigrant families across New York City. Mm. Uh, Sheikh Musa Drame, who was among those leading the response to the tragedy, said, we want the world to know that they died because they lived in the Bronx. If they lived in Midtown Manhattan, mm. they would not have died. Why? Because they wouldn't need to use a space heater. Mm. This is a public outcry. Therefore, there has to be responsibility from elected officials to change the conditions that cause death every single day. Wow. I'm telling you, I, I mean, I don't have the statistics. It just seems to me, every time there's a massive fire in my recollection, it's always immigrants. I mean, what, what he said just kind yeah, of confirms that. Immigrants. It's because, you know, where immigrants usually go to yeah. live is, you know, places where you would need a space right. heater. So, unfortunately. And, and there's fire codes in New York require apartment doors and large apartment developments to be spring-loaded and closed automatically during a fire. None of that happened. Wow. None of that happened here. <sighs> now, the building was on... 333 East 181st Street. Uh -huh. And um, it was called uh, Torre Tower. Uh, and it's believed that uh, Abdullah Torre, to have been the first Gambian to move into 333 East 181st Street. This is where the fire occurred. They were calling the building Torre Tower. He was then a 40 year, 41 year old Gambian diamond trader. He settled in the Bronx in the 70s. Uh, an ex Islamic scholar by night, Torre moved into a third floor apartment in what was then a new 19 story building. Uh, he was offered a place to stay, food, contacts for jobs, and the occasional verse from the Quran to newcomers from his homeland. Since then, entire community sprouted around him. The entire building was immigrants mm. from Gambia for, for, for all of that time. Um, just very sad. Very so sad situation. Sad. Like families. Yeah. It was, you know, not adults, not just adults, yeah. like family, mothers and yeah. kids. It's, yeah. just, it's just terrible. Um, I did see, I, I do love that I did see a lot of um, celebrities, especially celebrities from the Bronx, like um, Fat Joe. And then that were, they, um, they were like raising money, put, uh -huh. you know, putting together right. different, you know, funds for the families. So. You know, I love that, you know, just because they are from, you know, Africa or they're not Americans, like they weren't born right. in the Bronx, but they still represented the Bronx. So people from the Bronx have been, you know, really looking out for them. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, the fire codes were not followed in that building. No. And uh, when you have a building that doesn't provide basic service, which is heat. <laughs> at oh, this time. At this what? time in the middle of the winter. Come on. That people need to go buy space heaters. So sad. It was so preventable. So sad. So preventable. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.